Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. So glad you could join me today. We're gonna to be talking about calibration frames today. Dark frames, light frames, flat frames, and bias frames. And in this video, we're gonna go over why we need them and how to capture each type of these calibration frames to make our astrophotos better. Now I will admit, in the beginning of my astrophotography journey, I didn't really understand the reason for these type of different calibration frames and why they were necessary because I thought that you could just put a camera and point it towards the night sky and why can't I get that nebula? Why can't I get beautiful color in that uh, cluster of stars? Why can't I get that reflection nebula around the Pleiades? You know, why can't I? Well, the reason for that is, is that your photos suffer from a lack of calibration frames. And this is due to different reasons that the calibration frames basically add or subtract data for us that we either need or don't need in the photo. Now the first type we're going to talk about is light frames. Light frames being whatever your telescope is pointed at, whatever your camera sees. If you're shooting, you know, the Orion Nebula or you're shooting the Pleiades or the Swan Nebula or M35 open cluster, whatever it is that you're taking a photo of and that exposure, that ISO, that gain, if you're using a DSLR, it would be your ISO, but, or your gain, if you're using a cooled color or monochrome camera, that is your light frames. However many you wanna take, if you're taking one minute exposures and you're taking 400 of those, those are your 400 light frames in anything like Deep Sky Stacker, ASI Studio Stacker, PixInsight, any of them that do stacking, those are what are gonna be your light frames. Your dark frames are gonna be the literal exact opposite. You have to make sure dark frames though, you have the same ISO or gain, and you need the same exposure, and you need the same temperature of the camera chip. So typically a lot of the more modern cameras out there, uh, not DSLRs, but the modern astronomy cameras that are cooled, the color and the monochrome variants, you'll be able to monitor the temperature of the chip. Typically I shoot at negative 10 just because it's an easy target that I can achieve almost any time of the year here. And it's very easy for the camera to get to that point without using basically 100% of its power to power that fan to get down to negative 10. So I typically shoot at negative 10, but you can experiment with what you need for your camera and your setup. Basically there's two different ways that you can capture dark frames. You can either take your dust cap of your telescope, leave your telescope set up the way it is like this, put your end cap over the front, just make sure that no stray light is bleeding in, and then the same ordeal, you take your dark frames. Typically, 20 to 30 dark frames is good enough, so if you're taking one minute exposures, you want one minute dark frames, but you want 30 of them. So basically 30 minutes worth of dark frames is what you want for this specific parameter. But if you're shooting five minute exposures, then you want 30 five minute exposures as well. So you can create what they call a dark frame library, which means that you can set the ASI or hook it into your USB port on your laptop. And you can tell it, I wanna take 30 five second exposures. I wanna take 30 10 second exposures. I wanna take 30 30 second, 30 60 second, 32 minutes, 33 minutes, 35 minutes, 30 10 minutes and you can just let it run. Now that will take several, several hours. So I suggest doing it either on a cloudy day or overnight when you're sleeping and just make sure you have your camera end cap on or the telescope dust cap on and you're just letting it run. Make sure the fan has power so it keeps that cool temperature, whatever temperature that you desire to be shooting at. Typically the reason why we shoot dark frames is to reduce the noise that comes off of the camera chip. Usually the longer the exposure, the more noise you have in the photo and the end result. So what dark frames do is they take all the noise pattern from those exposures over the course of all those dark frames that you took. And when you combine them together in a stacking software, it basically makes a smooth noiseless photo from that. You'll notice that it's a lot less noisy, much more detail is refined. And those are the type of things that we're looking for when we take dark frames. Now flat frames are the next type of calibration frame that we need to talk about. And flat frames basically are doing two different purposes for us. They're helping vignetting and they're helping with dust control in the photo. So typically when you're taking flat frames, you can either do it with an LED light panel or you can do it with the good old t-shirt method. 
And what that means is that people take a blank white t-shirt, 100% clean, and you drape it over the front, usually with a rubber band, because you want it taut. You want it real taut, no wrinkles, no creases, nothing. But you want to make sure that it's not stained, it's not dirty, it has to be 100% clean. And when you put a light source in front of it, like the dawn sky, or maybe uh, a bright wall that you can, you know, that's uh, just painted white that you can use, uh, you know, it's an even light source, it will allow your camera to see the vignetting pattern on the edges. So vignetting is obviously the corners getting dark. And that is really prevalent in larger camera chips like the APS-C style and the full frame chips, because those are obviously the bigger chips. And with telescopes, sometimes that light cone is a little bit smaller than a full frame camera. So you'll have vignetting on the very edges. Now this QHY-183C is a very small chip compared to my APS-C. So I usually don't have issues with vignetting, but you still wanna make sure you take flat frames for the purpose of dust. If there is dust on the camera, you'll have what they look like little donuts on the flat frame. And the flat frame will typically just be either black and white if it's monochrome, or it'll have a certain color hue if you have a one-shot color filter in there. But basically it's just gonna be one even color across the image and you'll have the corners just vignetted up a little bit and any dust will appear on that photo. And the reason for this is, is that when we stack those, basically it erases the dust and it erases the vignetting in the photo. So it clears up the corners for us and any of those dust bunnies that we have floating on the image will be subtracted out of the photo, which is absolutely what we need it for. Like I said, you can use an LED light panel. That's what I typically do for my flat frames. And it's real simple to use one of these because this one is about 12 inches tall and about 15 inches wide. So it's a big one uh, for telescopes up to about a Celestron nine and a quarter or so. You can usually use one of these up to something that big. And obviously you can use it anything smaller. This is a four inch refractor, but this outer uh, dew shield is about five and a half inches roughly and you just simply lay this in front just like that when you're going to do your flat frames. You'll turn this on, you'll turn it down to its lowest setting and it's just powered by a USB cable. Now you can use it by plugging in the USB cable onto some of the new modern mounts. You can also just uh, when you have your battery pack with you, you can also just plug the USB cable into that battery pack and it'll turn this on. You'll typically turn this on the lowest setting. You'll have to figure out your flat frames though, in terms of the exposure that you wanna use, because you have to be able to see the corners and you have to be able to see any dust, but you don't want it too dark that your corners start to get black and they're coming in way too far into your center, but you also don't wanna overexpose where the center of your flat frame is just blown out and white. ASI Air usually does an automatic calculation that's pretty accurate that I find, and there's other softwares that will aid you in finding the right exposure. But typically, it's only usually a half a second to about two or three seconds, depending on your brightness of this panel and your settings on your camera chip. Now, one of the biggest things about flat frames that everybody emphasizes, including myself, is you do not touch the camera or the telescope after you have taken your night of photos. If this setup right here is focused for the night sky right now, you will take flat frames just like this. Do not remove the camera, do not touch the focuser, do not remove the filter, don't touch anything. Because flat frames are very heavily important that you take them with the same parameters that you shot your light frames at. Even if you take this focuser and dial it a quarter of an inch forward or backward, that can potentially affect your flat frames and how they calibrate out on your final image. Now the last type of calibration frame is called a bias frame. They're going to be basically just the shortest exposure that you have on your camera. For example, my other ZWO camera is a 0.01 second of an exposure is the shortest it'll do for that camera exposure. You wanna take that exposure and with the dust cap on. So essentially you're taking kind of like a dark frame, but not really. You're taking what they call a bias frame and all that the bias frame is doing is it's 
reading the readout noise of your camera. Basically just that residual little piece of graininess or noise that can happen just from having that camera chip exposed. So you'll need those four things. You'll need lights, you'll need darks, you'll need flats, and you'll need bias frames. Typically the rule is you'll take 30 of each. So you'll take 30 dark frames, 30 flat frames, 30 bias frames. You can take as many light frames as your heart desires, but make sure you take 30 of the each of the others. And you stack them all together and you get that final composite image. It will be the best clarity than if you didn't take any of these calibration frames before. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope this helps you out. And as always, if you like my content, please subscribe. It helps me make more content for you going forward. As always, clear skies and enjoy the rest of your day.